Hi all, welcome to the video lecture series of Object Oriented Programming. In this video lecture, we will be discussing about two topics. They are Value of Method and String Buffer Class. The value of method is used for converting different types of values into string. So by using this method, we can convert integer values into string double or floating point values into string similarly boolean values to string float object or any other data type to string so that is the basic usage of this method so suppose you are handling a different type of data and if you need to hand if you need to convert that into string we can make use of this method named value of as you can see here this is clearly an example of method overloading as you can see the method name remains the same value of but only the parameter list is different so there is no need for us to remember different different methods to convert say boolean if suppose if this was not there suppose value of method was only for converting a boolean value into string suppose we have another method for converting a character value into string we have to remember that method name also so this is the greatest advantage of method overloading also that is also clearly visible in this example because we can just remember just one method name to convert all types of data into a string and the method name is value of so if you want to convert a character into a string just think of the value of method if you want to convert an integer into a string then also you can think of value of method so we don't have to remember different different method names because we have method overloading concept in Java and so this example clearly explains the need of method overload this example explains the usage of value of method as you can see here in this program we have declared a variable named value its type is integer it's given a value of 30 and we are using a value of method and the value of method we are giving the integer variable as the parameter so this method will be returning the corresponding string representation of this variable and it is stored inside s1 so now when we print s1 plus 10 s1 is already a string and it contains a string value of 30 so 30 plus 10 it will be returning 3010 so it will be the output that we are going to get when we execute this program will be 3010 because s1 is actually string whose value is 30 it's not considered as an integer because we have converted that into a string by means of value of method similarly this example shows how we can convert the boolean values be all be all and be all two into string by means of value of method here we are converting character variables into a string by using value of method similarly here we are converting float and double point or floating point and double variables into string by using value of now we will discuss about the string buffer class and we will see what's the difference between string buffer class and a string class first of all we will see the difference between these two the main difference is the string class is immutable that means once we create a string object it is not changeable we cannot modify that string when we more when we try to modify the existing string it is actually creating a new string but the string buffer class is mutable that is we can modify the same string any number of times it will not create a new string since the string class is immutable it takes lots of memory because whenever we try to modify a, a an existing string it is actually creating a new string so it consumes more memory and also it takes much time to perform the operations based on string class but since string buffer is modifying the original string itself it does not consume much memory and the time taken for performing operations are also compared to string class it is very less and also the string class overrides the equals method of the object class object class we have mentioned this before is the parent class of all the classes in java object class is the parent class of all classes in java inside object class we have a method named equals so since object class is the parent class of all classes naturally string class becomes a child class of object class 
and string class overrides that means inside string class it has got its own implementation of the equals method but string buffer does not override the equals method of the object class even though string buffer is the child class of object class string buffer does not implement or does not specifically uh, write any equals method inside now we will discuss about the immutability of the string class objects immutable means we cannot modify or we cannot change the existing string and it is clearly explained by this example once a string object is created its data or state cannot be changed but a new string object is created consider this example here we have already a string literal that is s its value is sachin when we use a concat method concat method is used for combining two strings right so when we write like s dot concat tendulkar what happens is this string tendulkar will get combined will get appended to the end of the string s but it is not modifying the already existing string s instead of that it is creating a new string named sachin tendulkar so even if we concat tendulkar with s when we try to print s the value we are going to get will be such in itself so the existing string is not changed it's not modified that is what we mean by it is immutable this diagram explains what happens in the previous example we created a string object named s and we mentioned the value as sachin so it is creating a string object and it's referring to the word sachin in the next line of code we wrote s dot concat tendulkar so it is actually creating a new string object and the value of new string object is sachin tendulkar but already existing sachin string is not changed it's not modified so whenever we try to modify an existing string object it is actually creating a new string object so that is what we mean by immutability of the string object so once a string object is created we cannot modify so in the previous slide we saw, saw a picture in which a new object named sachin chandulkar is created so now we have two objects they are sachin and sachin chandulkar and there is no reference to the string object sachin chandulkar so if you write like this s equal to s dot concat tendulkar s was initially pointing to sachin but once we write like s equal to s dot concat tendulkar now s will be pointing to the new string object called sachin tendulkar but the st string named sachin will be there itself now why we are saying that strings are or string objects are immutable it is because of the string literal concept java makes use of the string literal concept suppose there are five reference variables and suppose all these five reference variables are having the same content sachin so we know how it is how it is happening or how it is done inside the uh, string constant pulled by the jvm when a string object is created jvm will search inside the string constant pool to check whether already a string exists with the same value if already a string value exists then a new string object will not be created with the same value so suppose i am declaring a new variable say s equal to sachin or s1 equal to sachin so and assume that initially there is no word so called sachin inside the string constant pool so initially one word or one string literal will be created named sachin inside the string constant pool next time when i try to create another string variable s2 string s2 is equal to sachin in that step jvm will check inside the string constant pool and it will find out that already there is a string object named sachin there so instead of creating a new string object s2 will be referring to the same s1 so now s1 and s2 both refers to or both points to the same string value sachin similarly if we try to create a new string object say string s3 is equal to sachin then also now we have s1 s2 and s3 point into the same string object named sachin and now i'm trying to create a new variable say string s4 
and that's why both these variables are having the value Sajjan. So now at present we have all these five reference variables pointing to the same string object. And now if I try to modify, if I try to change the value of any of these reference variable, then all the string objects will get affected. Because if I try to modify as the value of such in by s uh, by using the string object s5, I am going to change s5. I am going to modify the value value of such in by using the string object s5. That is going to affect all the remaining four reference variables also because at present we have five reference variables pointing to the same string object. That is why we are saying that the string objects are immutable. On the other hand, we have Java string buffer class. String buffer class are used to create strings that are mutable. That is, we can modify the original string. It will not create a new string each time when we modify the existing string objects. So, it is same as a string class, but only one difference is it is mutable. That is, we can modify. Okay, and there are certain methods inside a string buffer class, and that is what we are going to discuss in the upcoming slides and in, and in this slide also. There is one method named append. It is inside the string buffer class. It is same as concat method of string but only thing is new string will not be created instead of the original string will get appended by the new string. So if we have hello one uh, one object named hello. If you call the append method along with this same string object we are appending the value java. So a new string object will not be created. It is the same string that gets modified. That is append method. Similarly insert method. If you want to insert some characters in between the existing, existing string, we can use the insert method. So here we have to mention from which index we have to start inserting. It has got two parameters. First one is the index number from which we have to start inserting. And second parameter is the sequence of characters that we have to insert. In this example, hello is the object named as b. Into this string, I have to insert the word java from index number 1. That's the meaning of this line of code. So index number always starts from 0. So at index 0, it is h. At index 1, it is e. So starting from index number 1, so that's what the first parameter mean here. So from index number 1, so, so from this character e, I am going to insert java. So the output will be edge java ello. Similarly we have replace method, delete method and reverse method. So here in order to replace we have to mention the beginning index and end index. So we, it has got three parameters. The replace method of string buffer class has got three parameters. And the first two parameters indicate the starting index and the end index and third parameter indicates the value with which we have to replace. So in this example, hello is the main string that is pointed by the object as b. So I, have go I am going to replace the characters from index number 1 till index number 3. So when we say about the end index as mentioned in the string class objects or methods, the end index will not be considered. The character the end index will not be considered. So here index number 1 to 3 means I am going to replace the character the index at index number 1 and index number 2. We will not consider the character index number 3. So 1 less than the end index. So the replacing takes place only up to one character or one index less than the end index specified in the method parameter. So index number 1 and index number 2. So E and L will be replaced by the word Java. So as you can see here, at h java l o, this e and l is replaced, it is removed. We have delete method, it is for deleting as the name indicates. If we want to delete only a certain number of characters, we can make use of the, we can specify the character index we that we have to delete. So here the index number is specified as 1 and 3. So that there are two parameters, that means we have to start deleting from index number 1 and we have to delete up to the index number 3 excluding index number 3 so only the characters 1 and 2 will be deleted so index number 1 is e index number 2 is l and this these two characters will be deleted so here index number 1 is e index number 2 is l so these two characters will be deleted 
the index number 3 is actually this L but that is not considered so the one the end index only the characters up to one index less than the end index mentioned will be considered that is same with the methods with the in the string class also we will not consider the character mentioned in the end index so that is delete method now we have under method that is reverse method this method is inside string buffer class not in the string class this method is used for reversing the characters so as you can see here sb is the string buffer object and when we call sb.reverse we will get the output as this entire characters of the string or buffer object will be getting will be getting re reversed the last character will be getting it will be as will become the first character the second last character will become the second character we shall conclude now in this video lecture we discussed about the value of method difference between string and string buffer class some of the methods inside the string buffer class and why we are saying that string objects are immutable that is all in this video lecture thank you so much